The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and good afternoon. My name is Joshua Hudson and I'm with the National Native Network. And we're happy to present this webinar today through a partnership with the Indian Health Service, Health Promotion and Disease Prevention, and the American Indian Cancer Foundation. Today's presenter is Alberta Pacenti. She's a public health advisor for the Health Promotion and Disease Prevention Program with the Indian Health Service. And I just wanted to note that webinar contents do not necessarily represent the official views of the Center, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Indian Health Service, or the Department of Health and Human Services. There will be no CEUs offered for the webinar today. And so I'd like to introduce Alberta to you. And I think we could go to the next screen, Alberta. Hey, thank you, Josh. Um, <clears throat> Again, welcome everybody um, to, I'm glad that you're able to join us on this webinar series. Today's topic is on healthy habits and um, cancer screening. So the Circle of Life initiative was developed through a partnership between American Indian and Alaska Native tribes and Amer American Cancer Society. It is, uh, it is information that tribal communities can use to teach people about healthy habits, cancer prevention and treatment, and caregiver support. The purpose of the Circle of Life initiative is to help reduce cancer, morbidity, and mortality, and for improving the well-being of Native populations. The session objectives is um, we want to dis um, discuss how can choices about what we eat and drink affect our health and well-being, and how can choices about exercise affect our health and well-being, and how do certain factors in the environment affect our health and well-being. So I'll turn it over. To, uh, we have polling questions, so I'll turn it over to Josh for this. Okay, so I'm launching the first question asking what time zone you're joining from. So please be sure to vote. There was a note uh, from last week that if you're viewing in full screen mode, you may need to exit full screen mode in order to be able to vote in the polling questions. So I'll leave it open for another four more seconds. Okay, I'll share the results. The mountain time zone is representing most heavily with 35%. All right, so our second poll question is, what is your gender? I'd also like to note that typically I like to include a prefer not to disclose, but I forgot to enter that earlier today, so I would like to apologize. Okay, I'll close it in another three seconds. Okay, 98% are identifying as female for today's audience. So our third question, do you believe that cancer is an issue in your community? I'll leave it open for another three more seconds. All righty, 93% people say that yes, cancer is an issue in your, in your communities. Thank you for that. And our last demographic polling question for right now is if you're a CHR or health educator, how long have you been doing this work? And if you're not a CHR health educator, you're not, you don't have to respond.
I'll leave it open for another four more seconds. Okay. And I'm sharing the results now. It looks like the greatest percentage is one to four years. The second highest percentage is five to nine years. Okay. So I think I'm all set, Alberta. So I think you can advance to the next screen. Okay, thank you folks for participating in the polling. We just want to go sprinkle some polling and then some um, pretest test um, throughout the presentation just to keep people engaged. Celebrating life bomb. Um, often, the sooner cancer is found, and treatment begins to better the chances for living for many years. And eating healthy foods, staying active, and not using commercial tobacco can help reduce cancer risk. Together, we can help save lives from cancer and continue on our journey. How can choices about what we eat and drink affect our health and well being? How can choices about exercise affect our health and well-being? How do certain factors in the environment affect our health and well-being? Weight of the nation. Obesity is common, serious, and costly. Obesity increases the risk of heart disease, stroke, diabetes, cancer, and other health outcomes, such as dying at an early age. More than one-third of adults 35.7% and approximately 17% of children and adults are obese. A 2010 fact sheet from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation reported that 39% of low-income American Indian Alaska Native children ages 2 to 5 years are overweight or obese. Being overweight or obese as a child is linked to a higher risk of heart, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, asthma, and more. Between 1994 and 2004, the number of American Indian Alaska Native teens with diabetes increased. Behavior environment also plays a large role causing people to be overweight and obese. So this map represents, the, um, these are color coded. Um, the light green is less than 20%, uh, the darker green 20 to 25%, and the yellow represents 20 to uh, 30%, while the maroon represents to over 35%. Alberta, um, yeah. we're not able to see the screen. We're only able to see the, uh, there's one polling question still showing. So maybe if you stopped showing your screen and then started showing it again, that might refresh it. Okay. Let me go escape. Does it show up? Not yet. Okay, now we can see it. Thank you, Alberta. Okay, thank you for letting me know because I had no idea. Thank you for the multiple people who let us know. Thank you. Okay, watching your fat calories. Um, so instead of uh, drinking whole milk, you want to try low-fat milk or soy milk or almond milk. Just making this switch allows you to reduce um, calories by 45 calories per cup. When looking at buttered popcorn, instead of um, having the butters, you may want to go switch for a light popcorn, which is a savings of 63 calories per serving. And then pepperoni pizza. Veg uh, instead of having pepperoni pizza, having a vegetable pizza will also save you 63 calories per serving. 
cheddar cheese versus reduced fat cheddar cheese. Um, if you switch over to reduced, um, you'll be saving 72 calories per ounce. Potato chips. When you have a baked potato chip, um, it'll be saving 90 calories per ounce. And when you have an ice cream bar and then replace it instead with a frozen fudge bar, it's 108 calories per bar. So just remember that um, fit, uh, fat is a dense source of calories, which contains over twice as many by weight as carb carbs and proteins. Now switch to portion sizes. Three to four ounces is the recommended serving size of meat. Can you imagine how much this is? When you look at cheeseburger, which is four ounces, it's 290 calories. But if you go for a quarter pounder with cheese, which is seven ounces, that increases to 200, uh, 520 calories. Just remember that um, three to four ounces of meat is about the size of a deck of cards. So eating small, smaller portions of food is one of the easiest ways to cut back on calories. All you can eat buffets and supersized servings can all make it easy to eat too much. Some of the tips for eating out is you may want to choose a regular hamburger at your favorite fast food stop instead of the larger burger and save about 150 calories or more. Have small fries instead of the supersized and save about 300 calories. Order the small soda. It's about 150 fewer calories than the large one. You may also want to share an entree with a friend when you go, or a family member when you go eat out. Excess body weight, poor nutrition, and inactivity contributes to as many as one out of three of all the cancer-related deaths. Being overweight or obese is clearly linked with increased risk of many cancers including cancers of the breast, the colon and rectum, the endometrium, which is the lining of the uterus, esophagus, kidney, and pancreas. Having too much belly fat, regardless of how, how much you weigh, is linked with increased risk of colon and rectal cancer. What are your favorite foods? Gathering traditional foods such as wild rice, beans, berries, wild game, and fish. Eating home cooked and fresh fruits and having an active lifestyle is a good uh, is um, some um, positive behaviors to keep your maintain your healthy weight. And balancing calories. Enjoy your food, but eat less. Avoid oversized portions. The foods that you want to increase is make sure that half of your plate is um, of fruits and vegetables. Make at least half of your grains whole grains and switch to fat-free or low-fat milk or even 1%. You may want to reduce um, high-fat, high-calorie foods such as processed meats, sugary, and fatty desserts. You want to drink water instead of sugary drinks. And well, some of the ways you really want to go stay active is you want to um, to um, maybe take a walk um, during lunch, um, go with a colleague, or maybe take a break. I now that we're um, working, some of us are working from home, maybe um, to go outside and take a walk with your family member or take your dog for a walk during lunch or during break for a, take a 15 minute break just to get away from your screen. You may want to work in the garden, take part in a powwow of your family and friends. And so there's many, many ways that you can go uh, stay active. How much physical activity should we have? Well, adults should get at least about 150 minutes of moderate intensity or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity each week or a combination of both. Preferably, you want to go um, spread, uh, spread um, your physical activity um, throughout the week. 
when you're asking um, what is moderate to vigorous activity, moderate to um, vigorous activity could be gar um, uh, walking and um, maybe um, sweeping and, and working in your yard, whereas vigorous activity could be swimming and extra running and jogging. And so those are examples of vigorous activity. When it comes to children and teens, they should get at least one hour of moderate or vigorous activity each day with vigorous activity at least three, day, three days each week. You may want to limit your um, time just sitting, laying down, watching TV, or other forms of screen-based entertainment. Doing some physical activity above the usual, no matter what one's usual level activity, can have many benefits. Regular physical activity can significantly lower the lifetime risk for cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. This is an example of um, an activity sheet. Um, <clears throat> this, um, this is, you'll be able to download it um, today from, from, from the box, uh, uh, the activity sheet. Um, download it and you may want to fill it out. Um, maybe you could work on an activity that you can do with your family by seasons and what type of um, food are in seasons or at certain types of the year. We know that each season brings a new wealth of fruits, vegetables, and meats for, the, for us to enjoy. Each season also brings opportunities for new activities that will help us stay healthy and strong. For each season, you may want to list two to three foods that grow in your area and how you can prepare these foods in a healthy way. Also, identify at least one physical activity that you and your family can do during this season to increase your fitness level. So right now, we're at summer. What are the vegetables and fruits that are in season? Some, what type of meat is in season? And then what kind of fun physical activity can you do alone or with your family? You may also want to watch alcohol intake. <clears throat> Alcohol is linked to cancers of the mouth, throat, both voice box, esophagus, liver, and breast, and may increase risk of colon and rectal cancer in both men and women. Regularly drinking even a few drinks per week is linked to a higher risk of breast cancer in women. Women at high risk of breast cancer may want to consider not drinking any alcohol. The combination of alcohol and tobacco increases the risk of some cancers for more than the effect of either drinking or smoking alone. Well, um, some, you've probably seen um, in the media or questions being raised about drinking red wine, um, about the benefits of red wine. Well, it may be true that small amounts of red wine may have good effect on your heart. Drinking alcohol of any kind can also have bad effects. It can increase the risk of accidents and harm the liver. Too much uh, alcohol can raise the blood pressure and cause other health problems. Result, <clears throat> so um, it is best to drink in moderation if you use alcohol. Other than cancer and smoking, commercial tobacco is linked to emphysema and other problems with breathing. It hurts blood circulation in the body and causes many other unhealthy effects. It can affect children and non-smoking adults who are around the smoke. What is secondhand smoke? Secondhand smoke is smoke that comes from the end of a lighted cigarette pipe or cigar and smoke that is exhaled by the smoker. Whereas non-smokers who breathe in secondhand smoke take in the nicotine and other toxic chemicals just like smokers do. The more secondhand smoke you're exposed to, the higher the level of these harmful chemicals in your body. Secondhand smoke can also cause illness in those who breathe it, especially children. It can cause a child to have more upper respiratory infections like colds and ear infections and asthma attacks. It can also cause heart disease and cancer in non-smokers. There's also third-hand smoke. And third-hand smoke is residual nicotine and other chemicals that settle on indoor surfaces such as the curtain, sofa, carpet, and table by tobacco smoke. People who are exposed to the chemicals 
by touching these um, tainted surfaces. Young children are especially vulnerable because they ingest tobacco residue by putting their hands in their mouth and after touching the um, tainted surfaces. Electronic cigarettes or e-cigarettes um, is also another um, product that is not safe. E-cigarettes are also known as um, you know, e-hookahs, mods, vape pens, vape tank system, electronic nicotine delivery system. The e-cigarette aerosol that users breathe from the device and exhale can cause harmful or potential harmful substance, including nicotine, which is a and, and other cancer-causing chemicals and flavoring, such as diazol, a chemical linked to serious lung cancer or lung disease. E-cigarette aerosol can contain substance that harm the body. Nicotine is highly addictive, and nicotine is toxic to developing fetuses, which can go harm adolescent and young uh, adult brain development, and is a health danger for pregnant women and developing babies. Most traditional ceremonies of less than once a month and last, last several hours, which allows time for the body to recover from the tobacco. How is ceremonial tobacco um, produced in your community? So just think about how it's um, produced in your community, where is it located, and um, who has access to it. Um, you, some tribes may actually use this, may use tobacco um, tobacco plants, and then by maybe other tribes who use herbs and other types of plants and bark. So, and then the other is how is our moral tobacco used in your community? So it's just something to think about um, that we have to remember the traditional uses of tobacco. If you know of a smoker, um, if they're ready to quit, you can be able to go um, link them to these resources. Um, they can call the American Cancer Society for more information on quitting at the 1-800-227-2345. Or you can call the 1-800-QUIT-NOW to be able to link people who are ready to quit with the resources to quit. Now we're going to switch over to your environment. These environmental factors are linked to cancer, which includes sun exposure, secondhand smoke, infectious disease, chemicals, and radiation. At this time, we don't have enough information about the link between environmental hazards and cancer. We need to track and record more details about people's health to do this. More detailed studies are needed to sort out various possible links between environmental hazards and other factors, such as genetic factors, related to ethnic or racial origin, lifestyle-related risk factors such as tobacco, alcohol use, diet, and physical activity, naturally occurring carcinogens such as radon gas and carcinogens that people are exposed to at work, infections and vaccines. The HPV vaccine can protect against the types of HPV that have been linked with most cervical cancer. Human papillomavirus, or HPV, is a group of more than 100 types of virus. Some of these viruses cause cancer of the cervix, vagina, and vulva, which is uh, located outside the vagina, in women. They can also cause cancer of the mouth, throat, and anus in men and women. HPV can cause cancer of the penis in men. HPV is passed through skin-to-skin -skin contact, often during sex. Not using a condom during sex increases the risk of HPV. Many women have HPV, but in most cases, the body fights off the virus and it goes away without any treatment. But in some women, the infection may not go away and can cause cervical cancer. The HPV vaccine cannot prevent all types of cervical cancer. So women who get the vaccine will still need to get a cap test. Men also get HPV too and can pass it on to their sexual partners. Boys should also receive the HPV vaccine. This can prevent HPV related cancer in men. There is no approved screening test for HPV in men. Routine 
HPV vaccination for girls and boys should start at age 11 or 12. The vaccination series can be started as early as age 9. HPV vaccination is also recommended for females who are ages 13 to 26 years old and for males 13 to 21 years old who have not started the vaccine or who may have started but not completed the series. Males who are 22 to 26 years old may also be vaccinated. HPV vaccination is also recommended through age 26 for men who have sex with men or for people with weakened immune systems, including people with HIV infection, if they have not previously been vaccinated. Early detection. Cervical cancer is one of the few cancers that can be prevented. All women should begin cervical cancer testing at age 21. Women under 21 should not be tested. Women ages 21 to 29 should have a pap test every three years. HPV testing should not be used for screening in this age group unless it's needed after an abnormal pap test. Beginning at age 30, the preferred way to screen is with a pap test combined with the HPV test every five years. This should, contain, this should continue until age 65. Another reasonable option for women 30 to 65 is to contest it every three years with just a pap test. Women who are at high risk of cervical cancer because of a suppressed immune system, for example, like HIV, organ transplant, or long-term steroid use, because they were exposed to the DS before they were born in utero, may want to be screened more often. They should follow the recommendation of their healthcare team. Whereas women over 65 years of age who have regular screening in the previous 10 years should stop cervical cancer screening as long as they haven't had any serious precancer like C1N2 or C1N3 found the past 20 years. CIN is the <clears throat> okay, so women who have ever had C1, N1, or N3 should continue to have testing for at least 20 years after the norm, abnormality was found. Women who had a total hysterectomy, which is the removal of the uterus and cervix, should stop screening, stop screening um, such as PAP tests and HPV tests unless the hysterectomy was done as a treatment. Women who had a hysterectomy without the removal of the cervix should continue cervical cancer screening according to the guidelines. Women who have been vaccinated against HPV should still follow the guidelines. And they can stop cervical cancer once they have stopped having children. This is not correct. They should continue to follow American Cancer Society guidelines. No matter what their age, women should not be routinely screened every year for cervical cancer. However, some women need extra testing um, for special reasons, for instance, women with abnormal screening results may need to have a follow-up pap test done in six months or a year. Follow-up testing is not the same as screening. The American Cancer Society guidelines for early detection of cervical cancer do not apply to women who have been diagnosed with cervical cancer. These women should have a follow-up testing as recommended by the healthcare team. These guidelines do not apply to women with HIV infection, organ transplant, or long-term steroid use. These women should follow the recommendation of their health care provider. Family health history. <clears throat> you may want to go actually do your family health history to get to, um, to know um, your cancer risk know about um, did your grandma or grandpa on your dad's side or mother's side have any type of cancer uh, and what type of cancer. So you will be able to, um, you know, at your own time, be able to go complete your family history to get to know about your own cancer risk. I'm going to turn it over to Josh to go take us on our knowledge poll. Okay. I'm 
I changed myself to the presenter. So that way we won't run into an issue of the polling questions. So I'm gonna launch one of our first polling questions. We currently have a less than 20% voting. Okay, there's more responses coming in. We're still under 50%. I'd like to see at least 60%, so I'm gonna keep it open until we hit 60% or go beyond. Okay, so I'm sharing the results now. 33% responds, say two cups. Here's the second question it's currently showing, asking for how many minutes um, adults should get of moderate and vigorous activity. So there's two responses for each. We're, we're still under 50%, so I'm gonna keep it open until we hit 60%. So if you haven't voted, please vote. Okay. I'm sharing the results. The second option received the most votes. I'm now launching our third of the four polling questions. We're still under 40% having voted. So if you haven't voted, please do so. Leave it open for another few more seconds. I'm sharing the results now. 86% um, chose the first selection. And then here is our final polling question. We're still under 60%, so if you haven't voted, please do so. Leave it open for another few more seconds. Okay, 65% chose true. So Alberta, I'm making you the presenter again. Okay. And then we only have a few slides left. Okay, just double check in now. Can you see it on your screen? Yep, and I can see your mouse. So I think we're okay, good. Okay, great. Excellent. All right, so we're going to go over those questions, the polling questions, um, as we um, go through the key messages. Um, so the key me messages for our presentation today was maintain a healthy weight and eat vegetables, fruits, and whole grains and watch in your portion size and balance calorie intake with activity. Um, you may want to choose poultry, fish, and beans for high quality protein, and then limit um, processed meats and red meat. And limit time spent sitting each day, and get 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous activity, or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity each week.
You know, also, smoking, smoking commercial tobacco is the single most preventable cause of cancer. Besides being checked by a healthcare provider, you can also check your own skin each month through new growth of changes in the mold. And women can be checked for HIV infections when they get pap tests. HPV tests are recommended in women 30 years of age and older to detect persistent HPV. Um, the key message is to limit alcohol intake to no more than two drinks per day for men and one drink per day for women. Um, it's important to talk to your children and grandchildren about the dangers of commercial tobacco use. And when going outside, you want to be safe in the sun. Make sure you cover up, use um, sunscreen, and have your um, skin checked regularly by a doctor. And talk to your healthcare provider about vaccines for HPV and hepatitis B. The HPV vaccine only works for people who have not been exposed to the common HPV types that cause cervical cancer. So it should be started for girls and boys at age 11 or 12. Hepatitis B vaccine is now routinely given to all children. Adults at high risk may need hepatitis B vaccine too. Chronic hepatitis B and hepatitis C infections are at risk factors for liver cancer, but there is no vaccine for hepatitis C. Talk with your healthcare provider about your own risk. Cancer screening tests for most people depend on age. Men and women typically start colon cancer screening at age 50. However, if you have a high, if you have a family member who are um, close blood relative who are um, who had colon cancer, you may want to talk to your doctor before age 50 about your own risk. And women of average breast cancer risk start breast cancer screening with mammograms at age 45. But cervical cancer screening using the pap test starts at age 21. People at high risk of certain cancer may start screening earlier or have extra screening tests. The American Cancer Society is, um, has a, a wealth of information. Um, they provide day-to-day help, day help and they have the emotional support. You can call 1-800-227-2345 to speak with a trained American Cancer Society um, cancer information specialist if you have any questions. It is available for anybody who wants information on cancer, for information, for support, or for emotional support. It is important for both patients and caregivers to get outside support. Remember, healthy lifestyle can help reduce cancer risk. It is never too late to make it. Talk to your healthcare provider about regular cancer screening and early detection help to save lives. Together, we can help save lives from cancer and continue our journey. In closing, um, I'd like to thank you for your participation today. And if anybody has any questions, you can um, put the questions in the chat box. And the other is um, just wanted to share that um, next week will be module three of the Circle of Life webinar series. And then the speaker on that will be um, Kendra Rowland. Okay. Thank you, Alberta. So we had one question and I answered the question to everybody. Um, that just noted that there had been a change in guidelines um, that the mm -hmm. USDA uh, developed the My Native Plate tool um, and resource. So I sent that out to everybody um, and we will be including that link on our webpage where we will be storing this archived um, presentation. Okay. And um, did you want to say something about the certificate and completion? Yeah, so um, if you attended last week, um, I have not sent out those certificates yet, uh, but if you did not attend last week, but you're attending this week, you'll get a certificate for this week. Uh, but if you attended both weeks, you will get um, two separate certificates. Um, they will be emailed in the next couple of days. 
um, it's just a certificate that you attended the webinar. It's not CEUs, but it's a certificate that you could place on file with your employer and that you could keep for your own personal records. So there is a question um, asking if there's any information on the reduction of toxins in people with secondhand smoke after leaving the environment. Um, so uh, that's kind of a vague question, um, but I'll do my best to help answer and I'm sure Alberta can chime in if she wants to. So when someone's in a secondhand smoke environment, they are exposed to toxins. Um, and so by leaving it, you aren't exposed to those same level of toxins and your body is able to um, remove a good portion of them. Um, I don't necessarily have links that I could send you right now to share blood tests, but I know that um, some of our allied uh, public health you know, officials through things like environmental health, they study air quality um, and they'll monitor air quality. Um, and that's that's like a sub EPA does things like that. And so when you're exposed to environmental toxins through the air, um, when you leave them, you don't have the same level of exposure. So and your body will work to rid itself of those toxins. So generally speaking, um, oh, so there's a follow-up question uh, just saying, asking in regards to those who work in casinos for many years. So there, um, I think it really depends on the every individual and their body's capability um, and efficiency in removing the toxins. So in terms of um, no longer working in a casino or being out on furlough for a few weeks, um, your body will, like there's, I don't have the table right in front of me, but there's a whole table of as soon as you stop smoking, and even if you aren't a smoker working in a smoking environment, you effectively are smoking by proxy. Um, so within this certain amount of times, okay. in 72 hours, nicotine is removed from your body. Um, I don't remember. Did you have anything you wanted to add, Alberta? Yeah, um, uh, to the previous question about um, secondhand smoke, is um, it, it really depends to um, uh, the environment you're in. And when um, you're being exposed to secondhand smoke, if you're outside, um, of course, um, you know, that um, pretty much dilutes the, um, the tobacco smoke. And then, but if you're indoors, the secondhand smoke actually settles uh, indoors um, in the home, depending on the um, users, um, how often they smoke and how often they they smoke, if they smoke every day, um, uh, that uh, the person should be concerned about um, third-hand smoke which is actually the residue that settles on the furniture within the home. It settles on the wall. So anybody who touches it is going to be exposed to the chemicals um, that is found in the smoke. And then especially this is um, for children who, you, you know, especially toddlers who like to go um, touch things and put hands in their mouth. So they're being exposed to the third hand residue. Okay, thank you, Alberta. Um, we don't have any other new questions, so we'll wait just one more moment to see if anyone else has anything that they wanted to ask or add. So I did look up the information. So in as little as 20 minutes after the last cigarette is smoked, or if you leave um, a smoky environment, the heart rate drops and returns to normal, blood pressure begins to drop and circulation may start to improve. After 12 hours, cigarettes contain a lot of known toxins, including carbon monoxide, a gas present in cigarette smoke. This gas can be harmful or fatal in high doses and prevents oxygen from entering the lungs and blood. When inhaled in large doses in a short time, suffocation can occur from the lack of oxygen. After just 12 hours without a cigarette, the body cleanses itself of the excess carbon monoxide from the cigarettes. The carbon monoxide level returns to normal, increasing the body's oxygen levels. After one day, the risk of heart attack begins to, to decrease. Smoking raises the risk of developing coronary heart disease by lowering good cholesterol, which makes heart healthy exercise harder to do. Smoking also raises blood pressure and increases blood clots, increasing, increasing the risk of stroke. Um, Alberta, there's one question asking if 
you could repeat the HPV recommendations for a partial hysterectomy. Okay, um, let me go ahead and go get go back. Hang on one second. That is um, for a total hysterectomy, did you say? Uh, partial. Partial hysterectomy, okay. That recommendation, hang on. I'm trying to scroll through to you to see if I can find. Yeah, I, I don't have it all memorized. <laughs> Women who had a hysterectomy without removal of the cervix, called a super cervical hysterectomy, should continue cervical cancer screening according to the guidelines above. Um, so that's the only thing that I'm finding at the moment uh, for partial hysterectomy. And so the general uh, guidelines, all women should begin cervical cancer testing or screening at age 21. Women under 21 should not be tested. Women ages 21 to 29 should have a pap test every three years. HPV testing should not be used for screening in this age group unless it's needed after an abnormal pap test. Beginning at age 30, the preferred way to screen is with the pap test combined with an HPV test every five years. This should continue until age 65. And then another reasonable option for women 30 to 65 is to get tested every three years with just the pap test. So, alrighty, well, I'm not seeing any other questions. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, there will be a follow-up email sent within the next few hours, and we will upload the recording of this video to our archived page. If you've not registered for next Wednesday, which is module three, as Alberta mentioned earlier, uh, please do so. Um, thank you again for joining us today.